Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today, we're, the, the lesson is called In the Doghouse. And we're here with some fourth grade kids and we're gonna learn about texture. Texture is how something feels and we have a furry textured dog. We're also gonna learn about following directions and step-by-step -step instruction. We're gonna learn to, to see like an artist. And we have a 3D dog house and some real cool fun dog bowls. Well, we're gonna start off by planning and we're gonna look in the upper left-hand corner and we're going to find the center of the up left side, find your top, find your bottom. And of course, we're holding this horizontally. The horizontal line is facing us and we're gonna jump over about four fingers. Jump over four fingers and in the center of your page, put a very short horizontal line. And you're gonna follow this with me. This short horizontal line is going to be the dog's nose. So if you look here on this picture, I've got a long, a, well, a horizontal line, and this is going to form the oval of the dog nose. And that's my center point. So go ahead and draw that with me. And then we're gonna turn it into an oval by putting the letter C and a backwards letter C. And then I'm going to connect it. And we're gonna connect it right there. So four fingers over, horizontal line, and I've turned that into an oval. And that's our first step, one oval. Now the next part of this is going to be the letter V. So if I look here, I wanna teach you how to see. So we, we would look and see, now look, this, this could be called a letter V. And when artists draw things, they draw thing, letter V. I'm looking at everything now in relationship to another piece. One part is in relationship to uh, the next part. So if we start off underneath the, the oval in the very center, draw a number one, number one. Now, if we look here, I'm gonna put this in first. This is kind of like the hair. This is, it kind of looks like a mustache of the dog, but I'm gonna come down and out, down and out like this. It almost looks like, kind of like an M but the M has opened up. And I'm gonna connect these two pieces together. I'm gonna to go from the number one to the edge, whoop, and number one to the edge. And you can draw this lightly because we can put in the fur texture. Now, if you make mistakes, do not, redraw, do not erase, just redraw it. Look, you wanna fix it, you wanna make it longer, you don't like it, just redraw it and leave your mistakes. When we add the hair texture and fur texture, all of your mistake lines will be hidden. It's easy to hide. And I also teach the kids to transform. If you make a mistake, don't erase, just transform it into something else later on. If you ignore it and continue with me, then you can fix it later on your own. Directly above the letter V on each side, a very small circle a very small circle. You can even color it in. That's going to be his eyes. Another letter V is going to be between the two eyes. Jump up, do a letter V. Now look, this letter V is like somebody sat on it bloop, and squished it. So I have a flat, flattened letter V. And this type of dog, you could, this could be like a Shih Tzu dog. This could be like a sheep dog. Well, it could be if it's a long-haired one. This is a long-haired dog. So now I'm going to make, look at the top here has this furry hair coming off. So I'm just gonna kind of furry, fur, curve it over, curve it over until it connects. Just a few fur connections. And now I'm gonna add some wild hairs that are kind of flipping up. So wild hair up to the left or right, wild hair to the left and a couple wild hairs in the middle. And his little ears, now you can make these ears longer. It doesn't have to be as short as the dog's ears here. I'm gonna come up diagonally, up diagonally, and then I'm gonna flip it down. So two diagonal lines coming up and we look at, remember artists see things in relationship. 
So I have the circle, and if I take the circle of the eye and go diagonally up, that's where the ears will start. Circle of the eye, diagonally up. That's how artists see everything in relationship. Where does it start and begin on what you've already drawn? And then I'm gonna just kind of lightly curve it down. Droop, drop it down, drop it down. Now, it depends on your dog. If it's like a Scotty dog, an, an Irish you know, terrier, different kind of dog, your ears are longer or shorter. And then the fur can come up, 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 just lightly, light sketches for fur. And I kind of do this at a slight curve. I'm slightly curving and flicking my fur out. Now we're gonna do his little chin and form the mouth area. So if you look here, this is the darker mouth area here. If you wanna stick the tongue in, well, let's get the chin done first. A number one, a number one. This is one with a long, he's kinda of like my old English sheepdogs, uh, a long hair here. Some people trim this. Sometimes Shih Tzus are trimmed. And then connect, connect the jawline. Now, if you want your mouth closed, you do not have to add the, what I'm doing next. This is gonna be an open mouth dog. I'm just gonna do a number one again, a number one, and I'm bringing it over. So this is inside the mouth. And that's where you can stick the tongue in. That kinda looks cute like that too. If you wanna stick a tongue in, you can put a little horizontal line, and then two diagonal lines make the tongue. It's a horizontal line directly underneath in this space. I'm gonna color this space in here. A horizontal line and then kind of like a U, look, a U shape, but the U shape is off to the side. So I did diagonal, diagonal, and a U shape. Now, inside the mouth, it's dark. So, you know, I, I'm, get, I'm coloring it in a little. If you were gonna paint this or something, you might wanna put it in a deep red, brick red or Mix some red with brown to make it look dark, the darker. You don't want bright red. When you're looking inside someone's mouth, it's a, it's a deeper red, not real bright. And then you could put the center right here, a little line down the middle of the tongue. Sometimes you see that line on the tongue. Oh, he's cute. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a larger scale V now, and the V again is gonna be like someone sat on it, so it's expanding, just right in here kind of a V line. Sometimes the chest of the, of the dog, the furry chest, is a lighter value of color or darker value. This will just help us with our chest lines. Now this dog is gonna be laying down. You see here, here's another one laying down. So we're gonna form the back. And look, what letter do you see here? This is a giant, exactly, a giant letter C. So come on over. And, and I'm slightly, this is the arch of the back of the dog. And they're not flat like a board, right? They have a curve to them. So it's gonna curve down. And then like a backward C, look, after you curve down, I'm coming up and around, like a backwards letter C. Curve it up. Curve it over, horizontal, backwards letter C. Now in this area, I want, and this is the actual like paw. I mean the, the leg of the dog is kind of bent. So if you make a C right here, this is the curve that's bent. So C and then a, a backward C and then a backward C here. Now, the, the front, this is the, the back paw, so I'm gonna come over horizontally over. Horizontally over, and then curve it down and around like a, a C. And come right over to the body. Now look, if you're not in line, just bring it over to the body and up so it meets. So this all meets together. Zoop. And then you can put some lines inside. These are curves, curves. This just defines the toes, separates the toe. Now, if you're gonna do it, a dog that the tail has been cropped or there's no tail, for example, my dog has no tail, you don't need to put a tail, but if you wanna stick a little tail on, 
stick a little tail whoop curve it down and around there's a little tail if you want a longer tail of course you just make it longer now look this is where you this is where it's really easy by adding fur it hides mistakes so here's an example of a short tail you want to make it a long tail watch how I fix my mistake just draw it the way you want it and then look when you fill it with some fur lines you can't see my mistake and once you de design it texture it once you paint it color it you don't even see that it was a mistake so you choose your kind of tail that you want now we're going to come across and add some front paws here to the dog now look he's kind of twisted this is kind of like a side view and then he's turned to face us a little bit so i'm going to have i want a back paw coming out here so i'm going to come down horizontally around and back in and then i want another front paw here so i'm coming out and i'm going to make this slightly longer c curve and back to the body so this is the front leg notice that this leg is shorter than this because this is in front of this this paw so the ones that are farther from us appear smaller so it's just horizontal lines and give them thickness sometimes kids make this way too skinny remember this paw these legs have to hold up that animal so you need to have it pretty thick and then if you want to give them some toe definitions you can put a few little toe definitions in yeah dogs have more than three paws but you only see a few little toe definitions you don't see every one of them and there's basically our little dog guy and if you want to add the fur when you make fur somebody was saying they want to make another type of a dog well it's the characteristics of the dog if your dog has longer hair then when you draw in the fur your lines are going to draw go go in the direction of the fur the way it grows if your dog has short hair say i want short hair right in here his face is short i usually trim my dog's face in this area shorter so your lines would be shorter where your dog's lines and fur are longer here's shorter lines here your lines will be drawn shorter the way the hair lays and flows is the way your lines go so if the hair comes down on the ears like this, your lines are gonna be drawn down. And the same thing goes with the way you color it in. If you're coloring the dog's fur, your, your lines and strokes will match the way the fur is growing. If you're painting it, your brush strokes will be the way the fur grows and flows in here. And this fur kind of comes down on the dogs like that now we're gonna start in on our dog house we're gonna to come to this side of the page and we're going to make a horizontal line now you want this to be decide where you want your and we're gonna make it pretty big decide where you want the opening to be here's the edge of my page you want this line the dog house the bottom of the doghouse line to be parallel with the top of your page otherwise your your house will look crooked so these lines that we're going to be making now are going to be parallel with our page i'm going to jump in about probably about a finger or two a little bit more than a finger and i'm going to make the wall of my house so we're jumping in about one to two fingers from the edge decide how long you want your house to be now remember, you gotta leave room for the roof. You wanna plan it like that. And this line, if you notice, is equal distance from the edge. So that's parallel and that's important. I'm gonna now come across and I'm keeping my line parallel with the top here. And parallel means equal distance. So I'm gonna come on over, keep it equal distance. So these two distances are are equal now we're not getting rulers out and measuring we're just estimating the distance eyeballing it you don't want it to be way crooked but just eyeball it if you want to measure with your fingers mine's about three fingers measure over how how wide yours is put a little mark and this is about how wide I want my dog house now you're gonna drop it down and keep this parallel as parallel as you can 
Mine is a little bit off, but that's okay because we're not using rulers today. And then I want to put my door in. So if I put an imaginary line down here, I'm going to do my door opening. I'm going to skip down about two fingers, put a line. So basically I've made almost a box, but look at I didn't do the bottom. And I'm going to drop my door down, drop it down. And I'm keeping it a rounded door, kind of like a Snoopy door. In the movie, Snoopy has this rounded door, I think. That's what I remember. A rounded door opening. If you want to put a frame around it, that's kind of cool. A door frame. And then I'm coming across on the bottom. Now, I'm going to show you how to make this look 3D. I want to be able to see inside my doghouse. So I'm going to keep this parallel. I'm following this horizontal line. And I'm going to put a horizontal line where I want my wall to end. So the doghouse will end, I'd say, here on the inside. I come over, but watch what I'm doing. I'm not coming over all the way. I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to connect these two lines together in a diagonal. I'll show you it with this pink paper. Look at what I'm going to do. This is going to be a perspective wall. So I end about a finger, horizontal. Now I'm going to connect here and I'm going to draw an imaginary line. Look, and the imaginary line is going to connect to this corner. So I draw down like I'm headed to this corner and I stop. You see what I've just done? I pretended I went to this corner. This is in perspective. And now I'm going up straight. Now, look at this. I have an inside of my doghouse. So it went over horizontal, up straight, and at this corner, this went to the corner of the doghouse. Now, what's inside your doghouse? And you can add something inside this on your own later. Let's get the roof done next. It's kind of cool. Jump up almost to the top of your page. And I want you to find the center of this line. And I'm jumping up and I'm going to put a dot. This is going to be a pitched roof doghouse. It's going to be like an A-frame. So it's going to drop down straight drop down straight. There we go. Now, you can add detail to this doghouse later. You can add framing. You might want to add a little doghouse sign. Here's just a rectangle. And then you can put your doghouse name here. If you want to put the clapboards, which is like a siding, and when I draw anything, I don't draw them really, really, really small. I make nice thick things. If I were to make these siding lines too close together, I'd be drawing a hundred of them. And you don't want that. Just enough to give it detail. Because detail in pictures makes it more interesting. You can have a frame up here if you want. You can even put a little you know, make a little design up here. You don't have to copy what I'm doing now, but maybe you want a little design on your dog house. Put some, I don't know, whatever you want to make here. It just gives you more, maybe this is a vent, a window vent or something. Now this, the next step, now remember, you finish this on your own. You don't have to do all the designs I just did. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a cute dog bowl. Oval. Make it pretty big. You don't want real small. We're trying to fill up this foreground here in the begin in the bottom. A nice long, elongated oval. And now I'm doing two horizontal lines down. Two horizontal lines down, down, down. They went down and out, down and out. Now I'm going to follow this curve, this rounded curve, and I'm coming down and around. And I'm, I'm going to give it a little bit more roundness. I messed up here a little bit. But see what's great about messing up? Just redraw it. Redraw the line you don't like. And I'm just going to actually turn this into a little shadow here. 
my curve wasn't that great. So you just redraw it and make it a little shadow. And now I'm going to put a little, you know how sometimes you get a little, if this is a metal dish, you get a little shadow or a little highlight. And these lines, I'm following the same curves and I'm making them not all the same. You notice they end at different spaces. You never want it to be all the same. This is kind of like the sheen or the highlight or the texture that's in the dish. And of course, in your dish, you can put whatever you want in that dish. You know, you can mound it up with dog food, whatever you want. And then if you're gonna make one in the front, now, if this is in the middle ground, a dog dish that's in the foreground, because it's closer to you, is yeah. what? Bigger, good. So, make your oval come across. Just make sure it's a bigger oval than that. And then come out, out, round this edge, round this edge, add a little sheen or shine or, or value or, sh or something with lines close together. The shadow it could be. Now if you want to get detailed in this bowl, you can double lip it. Add a double edge lip. And then of course you can put stuff in your bowl too. Maybe this is water or whatever you want to put. If it's water, have, just have it kind of a clear liquid coming around like this. Say this is going to be water. There. And then you can have that a different color. For your water line, this is the actual water line. Right in there. Now, we're going to put one last thing, and then you can, you're on your own as how you want to decorate this. Oh, I do want to show you how to make a bone. I'll stick it in the doghouse. You put it anywhere you want, though. Two horizontal lines. And I don't do it usually straight. This would be straight horizontal lines. I do it kind of crooked. These are parallel, they never meet. And then backwards letter C, letter C. Letter C, backwards letter C. And then the next thing is a, a horizontal line that describes where the earth meets the sky. And the horizontal line is gonna be parallel to the top of my page. So I come across, and now when, as an artist, I don't want my lines to, to, to be equal and to connect. So I would never have my sky start with my roof. I would never have it match up with these clapboards here. I would have it not, and I'm horizontal, so, so it's offset. These lines are offset. It's just for visual interest. And I would never have it end right at the dog head. I would either have it above or into him. You, do, you don't want this line to be lower than the inside of this building either. This house here, you don't want your horizon line to be lower because this, is, this would be in the air then. So it has to be higher than inside the building if you have an inside building. And then at the horizon line, that's where you put trees. The, this is actually now sky. So you can do whatever you want in your sky and then your ground. And if you want to have like, say, you know, bushes, there could be a bush right here. You could have bushes and tree lines here. Here's the bush line and maybe some trees. And you can finish off this any way you want. Here's an easy way of making a tree, just wise and then giving the background. If you're gonna color this in and make it like a cartoon or a, more of a background. And of course you can add many trees. You don't just want one or two and you can finish it off. Add a name to the dog house. Some kids like to put names on the dog bowl. You can sign your name right in here on your, as you're signing your artwork. You can put more things in the foreground. Um, on this little paper in here, I even stuck in who's in your dog house. Now decide who's gonna be in yours. I stuck a little cat in mine, but you could put anything inside this doghouse as a surprise. And when artists make pictures, it's sometimes fun to put a surprise in your picture. It makes it more exciting, it makes it more interesting. You know, some kind of a fun thing and surprise. You can have little animals peeking out behind these bushes here. You can stick some more bushes in the front here. So some kind of fun things and add some fun surprises. Who's going to be in your doghouse? And have fun finishing your picture.